What's going on, everybody? I just watched the Christmas edition of Raw. I actually live streamed it from my computer so I could keep watching my brother play Red Dead Redemption 2. But I watched the Christmas episode of Raw and it was actually, gonna spoil it, a very good episode. So, and here are, here's the, my thoughts. So the first match was a Elias versus Bobby Lashley in a Miracle on 34th Street fight. And the match was just good old goofy Christmassy hardcore action that you come to expect from the Miracle on 34th Street fight. There's like points where Elias beats up Lashley with a Christmas tree, hits Lashley in the balls with a bowling ball, and Lashley attempts to use like Legos to like hit Elias with or power slam Elias into it. But Elias pushes Lashley into them. And, like, I thought I could only see this stuff on Grimm's Toy Show. Which, by the way, go subscribe if you haven't now, because Grimm's Toy Show is awesome. So, and Elias actually wins after he puts Leo Rush through the table, beats up Bobby Lashley, and hits him with a cello. Not a guitar, a cello. Though it seemed a bit small to be a cello. It was bigger than a violin, but it was smaller than I thought a cello would be. Uh, but anyway, Elias wins. Good for him. Good for building momentum, and I really didn't. I really enjoyed the match. I'm not really into the all the weapons matches and all that stuff, but you know this one was a good one. I mean, I like ladder TLC, you know all that stuff, but the matches with all like the point is it was a good match. It was a good match. That's the point I'm trying to make. There's also this running gag like on the back of Raw where the B team is like singing Christmas carols and all this stuff, and I like it. People kind of got sick of the B team when they once they became tag team champions, but I think I thought they were. I think they still still funny. Like it could, even at the end where they they like have their torn shirts and they're like all. <gasps> it's like oh my god, what did how did what did you guys do? I thought you were just singing Christmas carols. So anyway, we get Rude and Gable versus the Revival for the tag team titles. I am still not used to Gable dressing up exactly like Bobby Rude. I I'm I'm not digging it. But anyway, this was a great match, as you would expect. As we all know, Gable and the Revival had some good matches together back when Gable was teaming up with Jason Jordan. And Bobby Roode is a great wrestler in his own right, so this was a fun tag team match. The finish was Roode, I mean, Scott and Dash hit this, like, uppercut German suplex combo. And, and once an attempt to pin Chad, but Roode, Roode uh, pushes... Dash actually taps Dash and pushes Scott so like Gable can roll up one of them and win. So it's a great match, but it also leads it could also leave room for a rematch down the future down the line, which I would not hate. And we all, then we get the triple threat match between Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and Finn Balor. And I will say right now, Drew McIntyre. Excellent promo. That promo can just... It just makes Drew look like a star, because I have been saying for the past month that Drew McIntyre is the future of Raw. I mean, the dude has so much improved since he was last in WWE, like, 2014. Like, he looked good in 2009, 2010, but holy crap, he looks so much better here. Like, I mean, he's he's gotten so much better on the mic. He's his wrestling style is so much more aggressive, and like you could actually see like and everything. His anger and emotions, like everything, is just so great with him. Like I could see him beating Brock Lesnar for the Universal Title. I do think he's that great. So anyway, the Triple Threat match was as expected of Dolph Ziggler, Finn Balor, and Drew McIntyre. Very great, and surprisingly, Finn Balor picks up the win, and he. Does a double coup de gras onto Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler after Dolph hit Drew with a super kick. And then Finn clotheslines Drew out of the ring, hits the shotgun drop kick and the coup de gras on the Ziggler to win. And next week, according to Santa McMahon, we're getting Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage, which I'm looking forward to. Speaking of Santa McMahon, two other announcements John Cena's coming back. And we are getting women's tag team titles. Hopefully the Iconics or any three members of the Riot Squad will win those titles. So, up next, 
We have just a six woman tag team match. Vicky James, Dana Brooke, and Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Ember Moon. It's what you would expect with who you expect to win. But I will say it's nice that they're giving Dana Brooke more time to shine, show off her athleticism. Like, it's something she never really got to do as Charlotte's protege or as the statistician or whatever the hell she was for Titus Worldwide. So, you know, I'm kind of glad they're doing that. Because I don't, I, she's never gotten a fair chance to really show what she can do. And now she's getting it. And I'm glad. And up next, we get Paul Heyman's promo. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Riot Squad attacked Bailey, Sasha, and Ember after they won. So, there's that. And I do like the Riot Squad, so hopefully this will lead somewhere. But we'll see. Anyway, Paul Heyman's promo. It's a great promo, but... I am just so over Lesnar. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Braun Strowman, right? But as I've said before, I would gladly take Strowman beating him just so we can be done with this, so we can be done with Lesnar. he go back to the UFC, do whatever he wants. I couldn't give a shit less. But the fact that some people have defended Brock Lesnar taking the Universal title, like saying, well, it makes the title more interesting. No. No, it doesn't. It makes people want to forget the title, and it just kind of devalues it when the champion can't even bother be bothered to show up. And a champion, like, should defend the title, like, to make himself look like a better champion. But he doesn't do that. So, like, uh, and he's not a box office draw. People do not like him. People do not pay more to see him. That, that I don't get that logic, because... WWE has the network, and you pay a fixed monthly thing. You're not paying, like, $60 a month anymore for pay-per-views. So he's not a draw. Like, that's... He's not that big of a draw. It's ridiculous that people are still using this excuse to justify Lesnar being the Universal Champion when no when people were getting sick of it already. So anyway, Lesnar cuts out his promo. It's actually it's a good promo, as you would expect from Paul Heyman. Then Strowman comes out, dresses him up like a rain Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, which was kind of eh, like I did not enjoy that. Um, and then he says he'll be better in time for the Royal Rumble, and I hope he is because if he's not, then we'll have to endure Lesnar to WrestleMania, and I don't want that at all. And then we get Ronda and Nick Natty. Ronda Rousey versus Natalia for the Raw Women's Championship. Now, a lot of people did not really, were not really interested in this match, and I can't blame them, but I think they exceeded all expectations because this was a great match. Not only for the wrestling, because, I mean, Natty, Natalia is a great wrestler, and Ronda Rousey has shown in, her, in the matches that she's had that she can go and make classic matches when she when the stage is right. And that's what she did here with Natty, but there's one key difference. There was great storytelling in this, and it's a simple story. They're best friends, like, you know, the announcers, they go on and on and on about how Rhonda and Natalia are best friends, training partners, all that crap. And Rhonda actually, she's hesitant to, like, really do as much damage as she usually does to people to Natalia, because, you know, Natalia is kind of the one who brought her to WWE. It just kind of be a disservice, but Natalia goes all in, which can tr be perceived as treating Ronda like an equal. Like she believes that she's ready enough to take some punishment. It, it's great. And there was no turn after Ronda won. Natalia didn't attack her or anything. And like I could see why some people might be upset about that, but. After the whole Ruby, Phoebe Ruby riot, it would kind of be stupid to turn her bad already. Like, and we already had, like, Dean Ambrose turning bad after Roman's cancer diagnosis, so it wouldn't really be much, make much sense. But speaking of Dean, he cuts a brief promo saying that Seth is going to get what he deserves. Well, he's already gotten what he deserves for Christmas. The Intercontinental Championship. And then we get Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal for some reason. And it was it was basically a minute of Jinder beating up Slater, Slater hitting a cool round ass kick, and then the Singh brothers interfering. And then Santa comes into the ring, and Santa 
beats up Jinder and I think Samir, and then Heath Slater beats up Sunil, and then Santa hits a gore on Jinder, and it's Rhino. And it's kind of nice to see the crowd react to Rhino so much after he's just been part of a nothing tag team for the past two years. But, you know, Rhino's back, I think. I don't think it's supposed to be really confirmed. But he is back, so good for him, I guess. But why did you need to have a match? You could have just had a promo segment with this kind of thing. Like, I don't know. And But I, do, I did laugh when... Renee and Corey were kind of arguing about the Singh brothers after when they were doing their little dance, and Corey says the Singh brothers they br they bring joy wherever they go. And honestly, I think as much as you want to criticize Jinder for how he was pushed to the moon, you cannot argue that the Singh brothers were the most entertaining part of his time as WWE champion. They were awesome, and they still are awesome. So the main event is Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin, and. and um, non-TLC match because Corbin blames Seth for people not liking him as GM which is ridiculous but you know Corbin's kind of ridiculous I kind of like this match better than their TLC match I don't know why but I just did like it's a it's a classic like you know big man little man match where Seth uses his speed high flying abilities well, Corbin uses his really great looking punches and his power to like kind of wear down Rollins. And it is really a good main event. But I, I am weirded out why Corbin is still like wearing his dress clothing when he should be probably going back to his gear. Like, I don't know. He's not, he's not the Raw GM anymore. So it kind of seems dumb that he's dressed like that still. Well, anyway, Rollins wins with the stomp. Which I've, any of you noticed that people are like going, are like lower to the ground, like there's less distance between their head and the ground when Seth does the curb stomp. I guess that's to make it safer, but I don't recall Rollins ever hurting anyone with the stomp back bef back before it was banned when he just around the time he became champion. I don't know. It's it's weird. And Rollins wins, and there's no attack by Dean, which I thought was surprising. I mean, I guess they wanted to end the show off with a good feeling since it is a Christmas episode. But, uh, I don't know, I'm just... It would have made more sense for Dean to attack, and plus Dean is a heel. What better way to get heat than to ruin the good feelings of Christmas? So anyway, great show. A very great show. They, they went all out for the show, or... At least as all as you can for TV. It wasn't it wasn't spectacular, but it was a really entertaining episode. I think aside from the Vince McMahon as Santa thing, which he sounded so checked out during that, like he sounded like he was just about to go pass out and fall asleep. And aside from the Heat and the Heath Slater Jinder Mahal stuff, which I got the idea that they were trying to reintroduce Rhino, but you didn't have to have a match to do that, and you could have at least had Jinder Heath not look like an idiot. And uh, and the six-woman tag team match was just six-woman tag team match fair, but the matches they advertised for the show delivered. My favorite had to be... It was a tie between Corbin and Rollins and Rousey and Natalia. So, that was the Christmas episode of... Or Christmas Eve episode of Rise, I should say. And it was very good. And we'll see how SmackDown matches it later today when... They go into the Christmas episode with Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev for the United States title, and probably some other stuff that they're going to do. I'm excited, and I know you are too. So I am signing off, and I will see you guys tomorrow. But before I go, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more, comment below, and tell a friend. Now I'm signing off.